What's up guys, Brian Elwood coming to you live from the office with a quick lesson today about something that has taken me way too long to figure out. And <clears throat> I don't want you to struggle with this either because I want you guys to scale your revenue, hit six figures in your coaching business so you can make an impact on the world and you know really make it into a sustainable business that pays your bills. Your spouse isn't questioning what you're doing and wondering if it's gonna work. And uh, you know, to prove to yourself that you can really do this, to take your business to that level. The foundation is what I call client clarity. And in order to explain why this matters, I want you to think about the different marketing messages that you have been shown, especially probably in the last month as we've gone into the holidays. But have you seen like little ads at the beginning of YouTube videos or whatever, where the content had nothing to do with you whatsoever. Like you were being shown something like some, you know, kid on how to start knitting blankets or something. And you're like, why are they wasting money showing me this product that is just so far out of my wheelhouse? I would never consider it. Well, that happens to me all the time. And I kind of laugh, especially looking at through the mail I get and stuff. Um, it's like clear that they're really just using like a shotgun blast technique and that doesn't work for like, you know, small businesses like yours and mine, where we are direct response marketers. We have a limited amount of budget for paid ads or a limited amount of time we can put into organic marketing every day to make a difference. And so we need the stuff that we put out to actually work. And the only way it works is by knowing who it is for. And there's two levels to this uh, thing called client clarity that I'm gonna go to in a minute, but it's all, it's all about knowing exactly who you're talking to and then exactly like what stage they are right now. When you nail that, then your content resonates way more. People will read your posts or watch your video and they will be able to actually say, oh, so that's who he or she helps. And that's like where they are today, where they would need to be in order to get results from that program. And then they can self-identify with it or not. So it really pulls people towards you that are a good fit and pushes the ones away who are not. And so like, to give you an example, let's say that you're, let's say you didn't know who your ideal client was. Like, you're just like, I help people, um, you know, build websites or something. And then let's say we worked together and we found out that truly out of everyone you've served, the people who have been the biggest pleasure to work with, the ones who've been able to afford your services and the ones who have gotten results from the websites you've built were actually entrepreneurs, not just everyone, okay? So now we have the first part of client clarity, which is like the actual demographic of who it is that you serve. Like for me, it's coaches, experts, course creators, you know, that whole thing, right? That is my who. That's the first part. And so if yours is entrepreneurs, that would help us a lot because when we could say, all right, well, now we know like the external label that they call themselves and we know where to go find them because, you know, on Facebook, Facebook has already conveniently grouped together for you lots of your ideal client. I mean, you could, how many entrepreneur Facebook groups are there or LinkedIn groups, you know, or whatever else there's, there's a bunch of other platforms too. Right. Um, but that's the first part is like, once you're clear on the external demographic label of who your ideal client is, the next part is getting more clarity on what stage they are at in their business. And uh, if you guys are familiar with Eleanor Strong, she's an amazing coach that helps people uh, get more clients organically by writing these really sharp posts 
I worked with her one-on-one -on -one in her program. And, you know, she taught me this next piece. She taught me a lot, right? But the, one of my biggest takeaways was this next piece. And that's that you shouldn't just know who your ideal client is, but you should know where they are today. Like Eleanor calls it uh, the point A, like where are they today? And, you know, for me, part of the, the growth that I've had in this is when I first started serving coaches, you know, I was really serving all coaches. And, uh, you know, I realized after working with probably 20 different clients that I, you know, I had, I had worked with a bunch of brand new coaches and then I had worked with a bunch of um, existing coaches, you know, who are already making, let's say five grand a month or so. So that's, that's a big difference really. Like you're making five grand a month versus you're brand new and you're just getting started. The different needs that that person has. And I ultimately decided that my ideal client is already making, you know, five or 10 grand per month. That's who I can help. And my results have proven that. Now I have helped brand new coaches get to six figures, but the five to 10 K people, the people that are already in that space, it's much easier and more effective and predictable for my program to get them results. Right. And so I had to sort of draw a line in the sand and just say, that's who I am going to serve. And um, so getting back to like the example of, let's say, you served entrepreneurs and you're building their website. Well, think about how many different stages that an entrepreneur could be in, in their business, right? They could literally be still have a job trying to find their idea so that they can jump ship, or maybe they've jumped ship, but they're, you know, money's running out, time's running out. They've, they're working or they're working like part-time jobs to stay afloat while they figure it out. That can be one, or they could be, um, you know, they've been in business for, let's say two years and they're making less than six figures per year, or maybe they're already making, you know, let's say $250,000 a year and they have three employees, you know, um, like when we flipped houses, you know, we were making over seven figures per year and had eight team members full and part-time. And, you know, the, the, the customer avatar that I was at that size of a business versus like when I was a brand new real estate investor were totally different. Like I had different needs, right? When I was doing one and a half million a year, I was purchasing a lot of coaching around helping me systemize, helping me automate, helping me lead, helping me like, you know, whatever, master paid advertising on some new channel versus as a beginner, I'm just literally trying to learn like, how do I fill out a contract? How do I analyze a property? You know, all that. And so a lot of you, you have your program out there and uh, you have like what makes you special. So I would encourage you to think about First of all, who is that ideal client? And then once you know that, what is the stage that they are at where that your program can help them with the most? Out of all the different stages someone could be at, where would your program be the most effective? And one thing that can run you can run into is like imposter syndrome, like with the entrepreneur website example. Um, let's say you're making, uh, you know, 50 grand a year building websites for people, not a bad little business, right. But not like crazy money or just like getting by. And, uh, you decide that the person that you really get good results for the entrepreneur is already making like over 200,000 dollars a year. <clears throat> Those are the people that can pay for the services. They need it the most and they get the best results. Maybe they already have, like an influx of leads, but they don't have like a funnel to put them into that captures emails and, and takes them through a sequences of videos, has them book a call and you go in and build all that out. And that maximizes something they already had and boom, that can really increase their revenue. It's easier to turn 
uh, you know, a car that's already moving versus one that's not in motion. This is a common thing. Um, but the imposter syndrome hits if you're the 50K website builder and you're like, I work with people making a quarter million. And then people will say, well, you don't even make a quarter million dollars uh, per year. So how could you possibly help me uh, do that? But it's it's really two different things because you're not telling them like that you will help them uh you know grow their business every part of it from a to z like from two hundred fifty thousand to a million dollars a year you're not like trying to posture and say i know exactly what's going on with all your parts of your business and i will fix it all you really just have this one tool that's going to have a multiplier effect on the business and so that's how you can get over imposter syndrome is just think of all the different examples of businesses that are smaller than like the clients they serve, yet they help those clients go to greater levels. Really, the, the further along your client is in their journey, the easier they are to help. It's hardest to help somebody who's at the very beginning. Uh, and one reason to be honest, is because those people just haven't taken action yet a lot of the time. And so there's really no guarantee that they are an action taker in the first place. And, uh, but if you work with somebody who's already in motion, you're checking that box. Like this person's motivated. They want the result already. Like if you help people with um, like losing weight or something, like don't you think it would be easier to help the person who's already like going jogging every day and, uh, you know, trying to cook healthy meals, like, and, and tracking their calories, but the weight's just not coming off versus the person who's overweight and they're literally sitting on the couch, like munching a bag of chips while like reading your, watching your video about, you know, how to lose weight. You're going to have a lot easier time helping that first person. Right. And so it's important to identify those character traits in your messaging. That's what I'll wrap this whole thing up with uh, is to say is like, so you, you know who they are like externally, like moms, dads, entrepreneurs, whatever, something you can go find. And then when you say things to them, videos, posts, whatever, you actually say, um, you know, my program helps <clears throat> people who are trying to lose weight. They're already exercising. They're already meal planning. Things are not working. They've tried counting calories, you know, they've tried all the apps, they bought other programs, it's not working. And then that's when I come in and fix it. Then you weed out the people that will honestly bog you down and not be the right fit for you. Because the more wrong fit clients you take on, the less results you get for your, um, <clears throat> your coaching. And then it like, it, it it affects your confidence every time. That's something I've talked with my coach, David Foster about uh, just a couple of weeks ago when I was getting more clarity on this for myself. It's just, it. the more you um, kind of step out of your authenticity and you take on a client because you need money and you're like, well, surely it'll work for them. Maybe they'll get some benefit out of it. You don't really want to be that way. When you're on a sales call, you want to be like, um, honestly, if you're not making five grand a month as a coach, this is probably not going to be a great fit for you. And I have this course you can buy, you know, that's cheap. And if you go through that and you do everything it says, and you prove to me that you're an action taker, then we can talk again and I'll consider uh, taking you on as a client. So that's a uh, like strong uh, posturing, you know, and you want it to be authentic, but that can come from getting clarity on <clears throat> exactly where your ideal client is today. So you're posting about it in your messaging you're qualifying people on the calls to make sure the program works for them. I promise you there is more than enough of your ideal client that is at their exact starting point for you to have a healthy six figure or multiple six figure education business, serving those people, getting the best results for just that person in that situation than trying to serve everyone and just being frustrated by calls of people who are not a good fit or people DMing you who are newbies and you know that 
Um, they would probably be better off being served by someone who specifically works with newbies or specifically works with someone who, because there are people out there who just work with someone who is like never exercised in their life and, or, or whatever. And they just love that, um, that part of it. Like I have a client right now who helps women um, to overcome domestic violence, but she works with the women who have already left the relationship and, and are attempting to really restart their life. That is different than the woman who is still in the relationship with the abusive spouse. Okay. And so it's really important that you know, like, I don't work with the person here. There's other people I can refer you to, or I can give you this thing. And then if you're at this stage, then that's where I come in. That will sell your program more. It will push people away who are not a good fit. And um, the rest is history, guys. So I hope that's been helpful for you. And if you are a coach that's currently making around $5,000 a month or more, and you would like some help leaping up into that 10 to 30K a month range, then shoot me a DM. One of the very first things that we will work through is getting absolute clarity on who your client is and exactly where they are today. Because this literally informs everything you say in every video, every post, what you put in your webinar. If you run paid ads, like you have to absolutely know this. Um, it is the foundation for growing to a six-figure coaching business. So I hope this has been helpful for you guys. I got to go. Have a great holiday, and I will see you soon. Here's your success.